The rumors tying Auburn to Coastal Carolina quarterback Grayson McCall have returned. Could it be Auburn's next quarterback? McCall me, maybe? Freezing temperatures are likely for several hours inland and a few hours closer to the coast. Yes. You are Locked On Auburn, your daily podcast on the Auburn Tigers. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Yes, welcome on into Locked On Auburn, your daily Auburn Tigers podcast. I'm your host, Zach Blackerby, and thank you so much for making Locked On Auburn your first listen every single day. Joining me for a little War Report Wednesday action is Mike G mm. of the War Report, and the portal is open, Mike G. And I think a lot of fans are kind of antsy, like, is Auburn going to land another quarterback? Well. Rumors both in Auburn and in Gainesville, Florida, have emerged that uh, Grayson McCall, the Coastal Carolina quarterback, um, possibly has done enough to graduate. And so everybody's going to kind of be watching Coastal Carolina over the next two weeks before the, the, the portal window closes on the 30th. Are you buying these rumors, Mike G? Uh, yes. Okay, so we've been talking about for this for a long time. Uh, Grayson McCall, uh, for those of you who don't know, like you said, Coastal Carolina quarterback. Yes. Um, uh, Auburn showed interest early. Uh, he was actually in the portal and withdrew his name in early January, decided to spend the spring at Coastal Carolina, and now it's returned. Now, for those of and, you And the reason, let's just let's just go all the way back. So, and, and the reason he withdrew his name from the portal is because it sounds like there's a lot of interest with Auburn and a lot of interest with the Florida Gators. And he couldn't get academically eligible due to progress towards degree and credits and, and and things like that. So the thing was like, okay, he has to grad transfer then. And so could he do enough to graduate in the spring and then transfer somewhere in the summer? And it seems like there's been some rumors that he has done that. Right. Well, so as we know, grad transfers get a freebie. And that's what Grayson McCall was banking on. Hugh Freeze has been pretty open about, listen, he's open to anybody who can come in and improve this team immediately. Yeah. So, uh, you know, with the question marks at quarterback and what this, what direction they may go at quarterback, Grayson McCall is somebody that you have to take a look at. Zach, there are not a lot of sexy names in the portal at quarterback. And post-spring, barring somebody coming from a school – where they're stacked at quarterback and there's somebody who lost that job and they feel like they mm -hmm. want to play immediately, you know, you're most likely looking at somebody who lost a spring battle and expecting that guy to come in and save your program. I just don't see it. I don't see them getting a Joe Burrow type. I know that's kind of a wild, you know, like, but you get, you get what I'm saying. Somebody who's capable of coming in and being your starter, your unquestioned starter immediately. So McCall or, or Mike G. Few. Or Mike G, it's somebody that you have a relationship with, you being a coaching staff. And mm -hmm. sounds like contact was made between Auburn and Grayson McCall when he was in the portal, when it was legal to talk to him. And then obviously you can't do that once he goes back to, to, to Coastal. But, um, you know, maybe those conversations were had. Like, hey, let's, you know, see, see what, do what you need to do exactly. to where we can get you here. Uh, that, that doesn't sound like a far fetched plan. And it also would kind of add some extra context to you know why Hugh Freeze talked about his quarterbacks that way. Right. If if that was certainly it, because um, if he kind of believed that that was what was coming, um, it definitely shed some light on why he would say certain things as often and as insistent and persistent as, as he did. So I think that's certainly an element. But you got to think, Mike G. If he enters the portal, Coastal Carolina is like, okay, get out of here. Like you, you, you can't do this again. You can't do this right. to us again. And, and he's also got to know, like, if he enters the portal, you got to think he feels a lot better about the, about the academic situation as far as being able to transfer. And so that's probably a little vote of confidence as far as, okay, he's done what he needs to do, and it sounds like it'd be down to Auburn or Florida. Yeah, look, I mean, if he gets in the, in, in the, pro, in the portal, uh, yeah, I think it's going to be because he knows where he's going. Yep. Right, so he's not jumping in a second time to test the waters. He's jumping in because he's out. Right. And he knows where he's going. Uh, Hugh Freeze's tone around the quarterback, you know, situation changed a little bit after a day. I have not been in love with his tone about when asked about the portal. Uh, you know, it just feels like, you know, you need you have you have guys that you're going to need to perform. And right. if the message is consistently, you know, we need talent, we need talent. That's a 
bad message to the talent that you have, right? That you're definitely going to need to lean on. So finally, uh, you know, he's starting to change the narrative as it pertains to that. And he said, I believe we can win with the guys that we have. We can win some games with the guys that we have. But that does not preclude him from going out and trying to get better, which every coach should be trying to do in the portal season. So, like, uh, I think, you know, it, Grayson McCall, he's going to come in. He's going to have to compete just like everybody else. But is he so good that I think it's an automatic start if he comes here? No, nah, it just kind of depends on what these guys yes. do this summer. Yes. If Grayson McCall comes to Auburn, it's an automatic start. You think yes. so? Uh, I'm yes. not so. I'm not so sure, Zach. I'll I'll bet you one baby back ribs on this. <laughs> okay. All right. Yeah. I'll I'll do that. Okay. I'll do that. Well, then place to be named later. But yeah. I think um I, I think he brings a moxie to the quarterback room that I think I think is missing. Right. Like if, if you're down, if you're down a score. You know who do you trust the most in that situation? Do you trust Robbie? Do you trust TJ? Do you trust Holden? Or do you trust a guy like Grayson McCall? And I think, I think Grayson McCall would fit in so perfectly at Auburn because he's got that whole, like, I don't really care what you think type vibe, almost Baker Mayfield-ish to, to some extent. I'm not saying he's as good as Baker Mayfield, but I think his approach to the game <clears throat> excuse me, and style is similar. And I think Auburn would get around that. Like, a little bit of, you know, probably talks a little bit more than he should. Super charismatic, super spunky, and probably cro probably would cross the line to some extent. And I think Auburn people would really get behind him on um on that. And, and I think that'd be a I think it'd be a perfect bet if I'm being honest with you. Yeah, well, listen, the name of the game is win now. So if he's clearly better, then he should start. Uh, and I think that Hugh Freeze is going to make that. He's going to have to make that assessment pretty quickly. Uh, you know, and forgive me. Uh, wait, catch me up here, Zach. So if he comes in. Would he have a chance to go through the summer? At I think Auburn? it depends. I think it depends. Okay. And so, you know, if he, if he, once again, just a reminder, the the portal is open until April 30th, and that is okay. just to get into the portal. You do not have to pick your next Correct. school at that point. You can do that whenever you want. But to enroll in classes, you probably got to do it by early June. I, I'm sure every school is a little right. bit different. But – um, still, like if if you take if you take Grayson McCall, I, I think you can enroll like in a second mini master. And so if he misses that first part, then mm -hmm. you can enroll in a second mini master as well at Auburn. This is how they do it. Um, and, and that could certainly be a part of it as well. Because I mean what's happening in the summer is workouts and conditioning. And obviously you want to be a part of that. You want to be a part of that in front as far as you know, Auburn kind of monitoring you and also you want access to you know state of the art facilities. But That's like right. Um, as far as scheme and things like that, outside of just kind of throwing with the receivers, you know, after a workout or whatever, like that, that all, that'd be kind of all you, you, you would miss, but yeah, obviously that's well, important. Get, that's super important. I'm not uh, downplaying that. Get a hold of whatever version of the playbook they've created to this point as well, too. And yeah. start and start the study part of, you know, trying to win the job. So, you know, you know, Robbie Ashford has been pretty clear that he's <coughs> ready to compete with whoever they bring in. Um, but you know, it's going to be, I think it's going to be good to have somebody who can mm -hmm. come in and maybe contrast who Auburn already has on the roster. Um, it, so, you know, Hugh Freeze knows he needs a quarterback to win in this league. You can't, you know, dynamic quarterback play wins the day here, right? You know, uh, Stetson was the ultimate game manager, you know, uh, two years ago, and then he became dynamic in Georgia system, you know, when the second back-to-back -back championship that they yeah. won. Right. So you need guys to step up in that area um, unless all the things around them are perfect, which certainly won't be the case for all. It won't be the case with this roster yeah. for sure. But, uh, you know, it, it checks a lot of the boxes. It checks a lot of the boxes that Hugh Freeze has been saying, you know, an experienced quarterback. He certainly has that. A quarterback who's won certainly has that. And a guy that makes the room better. Uh, I think there's no doubt. Even if you think it's not a, you know, 100% chance that he wins the job, I think we all agree he makes the room better. So, because if Robbie Ashford were to beat out Grayson McCall, all of a sudden you're like, okay, did Robbie put it all together? Let's go. Let's see what he's about to do. Because that could be really, really fun in this offense. Well, I'll tell you this. There, the, the aspect of this that you know maybe is not being talked about enough is you talked about you have until the 30th right to get your name into the portal uh, right. And what he is going to do is definitely going to affect what some of these guys currently on the roster are going to do. So, um, listen, I mean, Holden Garner obviously can't transfer in a conference and play next season. But if you're sitting there and you're holding, you, you don't love this at, at all. Right. Um, if you're Robbie Hol Ashford, Holden's you timing don't love is it. tough. 
I mean, yeah. even even if no one transfers in, Walker White coming up behind him, I think mm -hmm. is tough. I do too. But this is a problem that the better programs uh, that have had success manage well, right? Like, you know, when you, you need to be able to get talent in, convince sure. them that they can sit and wait their turn. Hey, this guy's going to play for two years and he's out to the NFL and then you're up. Right. So you I think that'll be shirt. easier when Hugh Freeze recruits everybody that's on the roster. Fair enough. Right. I'm just saying that that's the place that they have to work towards. You know, you got to convince a guy like Holden that, you know, he is the heir apparent um, unless he decides that he's not through failing to do what he needs to do. Or, you know, if he just decides that he, it's not for him. But you got to be able to stack talent, man. And, you know, I think at Auburn fans have not have been so accustomed to like, oh, we get this guy. This guy's definitely going to leave, man. That's not what top tier programs are worried about, right? These guys are coming in and they're competing at a high level. So, yeah, it's just going to take time to get there. I mean, that's that's tough. That doesn't happen in just you know an off season. So we will see. But yeah, fun rumors popping up about Grayson McCall. There are two new players in the transfer portal that I think would make great fits at Auburn and are worth looking at. And you've got two guys that you're excited about as well. Mike G. We will discuss that in just a moment. Right here. On Locked On Auburn, Grand Slams, no hitters, and double plays are back, and there's no better place to get in on the MLB action than FanDuel, America's number one sports book. That's because right now, new customers can step up to the plate with a no-sweat first bet up to $1,000. Just go to FanDuel.com slash Locked On to sign up. FanDuel, the official partner of Major League Baseball. Mike G, two guys that have entered the portal that we have not yet talked about on this show. Let's go to the edge position. The former Washington edge player, Savelle Smalls. He's 6'3", 265-pound sophomore, um, declared for the portal, former Washington Husky. And you and I were talking beforehand. It's like, is he a candidate to be the Jack, is what you asked. And I said, absolutely. 6'3", 265. It's pretty close to what Keldrick Falk and Elijah McAllister are. So it's got that build that we've seen. And I think you could pitch, you know, I think you could pitch a lot of playing time to this guy. Yeah, like, listen, solving that Jack deal and, and building some depth to that position is going to be something that's super important for Auburn on defense this year. So uh, with Savelle coming in, uh, you know, we talked about D-line a lot, right? You know, after, and now we've got Embuzz on his way out. And, they, you know, I know he's not at the edge, but, you know, D-line as a whole, they need to build depth there. And yeah. uh, I did maybe... I don't know. Uh, I called the, the Emba thing. I I didn't I didn't see it coming, but you know he he decided that he's going to leave. And you you just got to continue to bring in talent. You got to continue to stack talent. That's the name of the game here. So um, I like Savelle Smalls. You know, I took a look at his measurables. Um, he he looks like a guy at a position where you know there's already going to be a plan to rotate a bunch of guys. Yeah. Right. So he should get a chance to make an impact if he decides to come in. Yeah, limited playing time through 29 games in Washington, only 32 tackles, one tackle behind the line of scrimmage, but still a guy that I am watching. I think yeah. it lo he looks the part. You're not asking him to come in and be a starter. Could be a Marcus Bragg type That's ad right. from a year ago. Um, I would take that. I would take him in a heartbeat. Another guy is a former Auburn commit, Cameron Kelly. Yeah. He is, uh, he is a transfer from Virginia, technically, but he flipped from Auburn to North Carolina. In, I believe the 2019 class played four years in North Carolina, transferred to Virginia this past year, did not play, entered the portal again. We'll see. Is this a guy that Hugh Freeze and staff would want? But this is a defensive back that I think, uh, you know, former four-star, um, got some, you know, third-team all ACC honors on his resume. But once again, we're talking about depth here, you know, a guy with four years of playing experience, like that, that, that could be something. Former Robert commit, maybe, maybe something happens there. Yeah, listen, 179 tackles, five interceptions. You know, that's not bad experience to bring in, right? So, you know, when you're looking at Cameron Kelly, you're just thinking this guy is familiar with Auburn first and foremost yeah. because he was former. He liked committed. Auburn at one point, right? Yeah. So, uh, bringing guys in, Hugh Freeze has talked about that will be bought in. And will buy into the system. Again, super important. It's going to be something that if you're going to go in the portal and you're going to reach for guys, these have to be guys who are going to be instant impact guys, right? Because I still believe the best way to build a program long term is through recruiting out of high school. But 
you know, the portal does provide an opportunity for you to fill some needs quickly. Now, uh, when you're looking at this kid, do I think the DB room is one of those places where they're shorthanded? Not really. I, I like I like where Auburn's at in that position group. The talk but, is they want to add one more, though. I mean, that's yeah. the talk, whether we think they should or not. You know, that, that's what a lot of people are saying. Yeah, it, it gives me kind of Drayshawn Miller vibes <laughs> a little bit. Um, where you, know, you get a guy who's coming in and he's got a lot of experience. And You, you know, know what it gives me, actually? By Darius Knighton mm. Mm. is what it gives me. Because I remember at that point, when by Darius Knight and commit, I was like, why are we getting DBs? Like, that's our like solid position. He actually was, he was decent. Um, right. I think he and Donovan Kaufman came in at the same time, but it's like, just because you're deep at a position group, doesn't mean you can't find other guys that can contribute. And so I still think there's questions about that nickel. They call it the star position. Fans call it the nickel position. That, mm -hmm. that extra defensive back that's in the middle of the field. I think there's still some questions about who could play there. And so, you know, I, I think that's something that they're looking at. Yeah, definitely. You've got two offensive linemen that you're interested in. I do. I do. And uh, the first one is Emmanuel Pregnon, right? Uh, I think he's all, the best player currently in the portal, Mike G. Right. Emmanuel Pregnon. Now, Zach, uh, a good offensive line and, and defensive line. Just so everybody is, knows, Mike G, I'm so sorry to cut you off. He's the right guard out of Wyoming. That's right. That's right. Um, listen, a good offensive line, a good defensive line can be the difference between a championship and a championship appearance. <laughs> Mm. So people who, you know, are dominate the line, we've seen it time and time again throughout the SEC when the, when they get into championship games or high profile games, uh, they're built different along the lines. I think other conferences have caught up to some extent, but I think the SEC still dominates there and figuring out a way to build a dominant, not just a good offensive line, a dominant offensive line is going to be super important. Now, I think Auburn has potentially a starting five on offensive line. Already. Who is it? Right. Um, who are the guards? We know the other three. Who are the guards? Jeremiah, right, left? Yeah. You have Connor Lou or Tate Johnson at right? Uh, Freeze spoke highly of Lou, but I'm going He's with Tate highly Johnson. of both of them. Yeah, but I'm going with Tate Johnson on this one. Okay. Right. So uh, it's going to be, it's just going to be interesting to see you know, what they decide to do there. Now you have to build depth at the at depth at the two deep there. And, and I know for certain they don't feel good after the, after the, the first five. So, or the potential first five. Uh, so this is where I like pregnant to come in and potentially um, add some competition and depth to that room because they're definitely going to need it, man. Injuries happen. Pregnant uh, starts. Pregnant starts at either guard spot. He's better than right. all three guards that we just said, I mm. think. Um, and then you want to tee up the other offensive lineman? Yeah. Um, Jaden Muskrat, right? Jaden Muskrat. I love that name, by the way. <laughs> Sounds like an uh, offensive lineman from uh, from Tulsa, doesn't it? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> right. Uh, it's, he's coming from Tulsa. Uh, you know, word on the street is Gus sent him our way. Just kidding. Tulsa. Um, so Philip Montgomery. <laughs> Philip Montgomery is <laughs> right. going to get his dude. Played for him last year. Yeah, that's right. Listen, these guys are getting guys they're familiar with. Right. And I don't think that that's a bad thing. I think it's a great thing to go out and get guys that you're familiar with. So um, for Muskrat, again, the depth feast, man, uh, they brought in nine linemen between recruiting and the portal so far. And now they're adding potentially more, and they've got to do that. Now, I, I think that there may be some exits because of these additions, right? So uh, addition by subtraction, maybe, you know, in the offensive line room, uh, but it's going to happen. I think this is going to cause some attrition to happen in that room. Uh, too many guys, not enough starting spots. Right? Well, so, so you know, so just some perspective on the offensive line situation. Hugh Freeze believes the current state of roster management where you get 85 scholarships, mm -hmm. you need 16 scholarship offensive linemen. Woo. Right now, Auburn has 15 Last week with Ferg, I said 16. I counted Court Bradley as a scholarship player. Okay. I was wrong on that. So Auburn has 15 scholarship guys with Court Bradley, who I actually think is a pretty solid third-string center. I'm just going to be honest with you. Mm -hmm. But still, doesn't matter. I don't think he's ever going to play. So they want one more. And he talked about it in Mobile, about how they wanted, um, he wanted one more, go, that 16th offensive lineman. And so if it's Muskrat, I think they take both of these guys that you just mentioned. I think they would take Pregnant, and I think they would take Muskrat. Right, definitely. But then one guy would have to leave. And so, you know, I, I think I think as far as attrition goes, that's going to be one to watch. 
because they'll add one offensive lineman, but if they add another one, does somebody else leave? Um, and is it their choice or is it, you know, Hugh Freeze and the staff kind of saying, okay, you know, maybe you should check somewhere else. Um, <laughs> right. But yeah, uh, that, that's a fun situation that we're going to monitor over the next few weeks. There's no yeah, question they, about it. Yeah. Again, it, the offensive line is going to be one of the most scrutinized groups could this coming season, no matter who's quarterback. Right. And if it is McCall or if it's somebody like Holden, you know, um, I don't, ex- I don't expect TJ to be here. Uh, I'm going to disagree with you on that. Hmm? I think, I think, I think the offensive line is going to be a strength of this offense next year. Oh, I'm not saying that they won't. I'm saying that they're going to be under the microscope in terms of how they're performing. Right. Like, so people are going to be watching this. People are going to be watching, you know, what kind of protection are we providing the quarterbacks? They showed yeah. a lot of promise in the run game at the end of last season. Uh, we saw it kind of on display versus our own D line you know, during a day. Uh, but because uh, of the weather, we didn't really get to see much in terms of basic pass protection, right? On a day. I've I've got a lot of thoughts on that. Let's let's do that show next Wednesday because I can okay. do a full show on this conversation. Because uh, yeah. I think I disagree with you to some extent. I mean, some of what you're saying is factually true, but some of it I'm like, ah, I don't know. So let's push that. That'll okay. be a good off season. Right. That'll be a good off season topic. We've got plenty of time to talk about All that right. before before we play football again. Mike G, why are things happening so slow? We discuss this in just a moment right here on Locked On Auburn. I want to encourage you to join the Locked On Auburn Discord. It is free. All you have to do is click the link in the episode description down below. Mike G, I've been really surprised with how slow the portal period has been, not just for Auburn, but throughout all of college football. Where do you stand on this? Um, I'm actually, I'm not surprised by it. Okay. Uh, uh, listen, again, these are all, <laughs> this is going to sound bad. This is all the a lot of loser battles, right? Like guys who are, you know, they went through, they try to compete where they're at and they're going to try to find someplace else to compete if they don't like their prospects where they're at, right? There's a reason you go through spring with your current team. It's because, you know, and there's some off reasons why guys do it when they still intend to leave. Um, McCall would be a perfect example uh, where it's, there's, they're, they're academic things that you need to take care of before you can really do what you need to do. But, you know, ultimately, uh, this is this is not the exciting. This is not the sexy, exciting part of the portal season. Right. I think we should expect this to be somewhat slow. If you find a diamond in the rough post spring, good for you. Mm-hmm. Right. You know, maybe somebody falls in your lap. You know, is it is it possible? Arch Manning says, you know what? I'm way better than the Quinn Ewers. I'm out. I got a freebie before no. I've even played in a game. Right? Like, right. Not likely. But, you know, somebody somewhere is going to get a player they didn't expect to be good, and they're going to be really good. I just think fans should lock in on the guys that are currently on roster and just start to focus on what their coach is doing to improve the current state of the roster in terms of development because that's still the name of the game. Portal, you know, you know what this is like, Zach? What's that? Maybe this might be a false equivalency, so feel free to bust me up. But okay. <laughs> this feels like how people acted when Auburn would constantly go to the JUCO ranks to find players. Like it's like, oh, who's gonna be the next big JUCO who's gonna come in and and rock out? Who's the next Nick Farrelly or Cam Newton or or, or you know, and those. Those stop gaps produced some pretty memorable players for Auburn right over the years, but ultimately, I, they never really built a pipeline that way because at important positions there was a fall off. Like you know, after Nick Marshall, there was a fall off. It was a long fall off to Jared Stidham, right? And then it's, you still you win and you got a JUCO player, and then there you know, and then you got Bo, and you know we were like maybe this is the start of them recruiting guys out of high school and then next guy up, next guy up, next guy up. Mm -hmm. And it just never really happened. So, you know, the portal madness, the portal hysteria over who's going to be the next guy they're going to get out of the portal is, you know, I think it's causing a lot of people to be delusional about what's actually out there in the portal. There's still ways to make your roster better though. Sure. As far as, as far as the Juco stuff, I think that was a really poor narrative that existed during the Gus Malzahn era. I hated all of that. I really? loved Juke. I, I loved Juke. Well, I mean, his, his track record was pretty remarkable with those guys. It was pretty solid. 
Sure. It needed to be because it wasn't with the guys that he recruited out of high school. And then the irony of it all is I remember this there. I had to defend it every day on the radio. It's back when I was doing radio stuff mm -hmm. in the afternoons where it's like, everybody's like, man, I don't want Juco guys. And it's like, okay, so you go out and get this quarterback from high school that everybody wanted. And it just didn't work out with Jeremy. It just didn't work out with Jeremy. But the irony is like, we need to get guys out of high school. And it's like, you got dudes that everybody wanted. Sean White was an Elite 11 finalist. And it's just right. like, it just didn't work out. And then they because, went Juco again and it worked. And so it's just you, like... But you picked I, poorly. And you developed poorly. And you evaluated poorly. That's the only reason guys out of high school don't work out. Right? It's either an evaluation problem or it's a development problem. Either way... Or I'm, there's I'm, something in their core that just doesn't develop the way it's supposed to. I mean, I, I don't think... like. What what were they supposed to do different with Sean White? I mean that guy that guy battled all sorts of stuff. It seems like it seems yeah. like, and he's talked about it a little bit on other shows. And, and then he, like with Jeremy Johnson, like how are they supposed to like evaluate the fact that when lights turned on, he fell apart? Listen, mental makeup is something that can be coached. I think personally, and I don't know that how you look at their track record with quarterbacks. I agree with that, that to an extent, right, but at yeah. quarterbacks, when you need to lead an offense for a, a team that has all this expectation on it. I think there's a lot of it factor that you just have to either you have it or you don't. Okay, <laughs> but that's part of the scouting and evaluation part process for a lot of these coaches. It's like, does this guy have the it and their track record? Suggests yeah, but, but most SEC teams were dying for Jeremy Johnson to visit them. Like, let, let's don't act like Gus just missed on this. Oh, well, yeah, I don't. Maybe he didn't miss on the talent, but I'm telling now you. Now, the picking Tyler Queen over Lamar Jackson, we can point at that one. Okay, we, sure. We can look at that. That's yeah, cool. That's still I'm cool with that one. But just kind of going for a guy that like everybody wanted and then saying like, oh, yeah, it's your fault that it didn't work out. I don't know about that. Could you say you should have pulled him a little bit earlier and given Sean White more of a runway? Sure. I thought Sean White looked better at A Day that year, but whatever. Yeah. I don't know how much I'm faulting Jeremy Johnson. I'm just saying there was a development issue and there, you know, whatever. I think mix. it's a narrative where we like to pick and choose certain things. And I do it with stuff too. Sure. <clears throat> I do it with stuff too. But it is what it is. It Either is way, Q Freeze has got to get better at it, right? His staff has to be better <sighs> at identifying the I'm players sorry. that they want and making sure that those players see their potential, right? Because you, if you're consistently bringing in top ten talent, yeah, right. right, and you're so, you don't have top ten results, that's that's there's the development sh issue there. Yeah, no, we all, we all agree recruiting better players is good. That's certainly mm -hmm. the goal. And if you can do, if you can pick, do it out of high school. Uh, we're all in agreement there. We're all in agreement there. Uh, I'm out of voice, Mike G. How can people check out everything you got? Uh, hey, check us out on YouTube. Uh, we've got a lot of great things going this summer. So um, Cole Kublik joined us to talk offensive line. Go take a look at that segment. Uh, we got some other things coming that I think people will like. So YouTube, Twitter, Instagram, and the Tiki Talks. Check us out at the War Report. You can find all my written work at auburndaily.com. And we will see you tomorrow. This has been Locked on Auburn.